This chapter is an extension of the central limit theorem. And now what we know about the central limit theorem is that as we sample more, the distribution will get tighter and more normal. We've seen this in class. So when have we sampled enough? <clears throat> Under most definitions, we've sampled enough by usually about 50, some might say 100. I usually say we're good at 50, and I stand by that. I've seen very little problems beyond 50. That is when pretty much any distribution, no matter how odd it looks, the sampling distribution of means of sample size 50 will be normally distributed. So we're not looking at an individual here. We're looking at a distribution of means. That is very, very important to this problem. So when we look at this problem right here, we first look at pregnancies between 275 to 290 days. Well, we need a model to describe that. And we're just talking about an individual pregnancy here. So this goes back to a chapter six problem. So pregnancies are normally distributed with a mean of 264 and a standard deviation of 17. Go to the David M. Lane applet right here, David M. Lane applet, and we need to put in 264 and I believe it was 17. Let's double check those answers right here. Yes, that is what we need to put in. We're simply going to ask it to plot the pregnancies between 275 and 290. Now, if we think about this, 275 is a mm, little less than 1. It's like 0 0.6 standard deviations above, and 290 is somewhere up here. So maybe about, I'm trying to think here, maybe 20%. Yeah, that was actually just a guess. And there we go. Because I know there's 34% in here, because half of 68. And then there is, I believe right in here, uh, there's 13.5, because there would be 16% left, and then 2.5 left on the other side. So I just kind of did some guesstimating. You don't have to do that. You can use the applet, and this is how you'd solve answers for the homework. But on the test, it's important to be able to just probably be able to graph this, and maybe give an estimate. Um, you could say it'd be between, I guess, it'd be less than 47.5. That's about as much as we can narrow it down to, because in between here and here is half of 95. That'd be 47.5%. And if you look at it, it's about half of that. It's about 20. So we have the answer to the first one right here. I think it was 19.7. Let's double check so I don't get an answer wrong. 19.6. Would have accepted 19.7. Probably not. Let's find out. Hey, it accepted it. That's good enough. <laughs> so now we want to find out at least how many days should the longest 20% of all pregnancies last. And we're kind of close to that right now. We're very close to it. But let's go ahead and take this right here. And we can use these answers right here. We have the mean and standard deviation. <clears throat> and now we want to ask it for the longest 20% of pregnancies. So now we've asked it the longest 20% of pregnancies is 278.3 days, right about where we at before. Round to one decimal place, 278.3. So we wouldn't have been right on it before. And also, our answer before was not the 20% of the longest. It was contained in an interval. So you can use guesstimation techniques, but the applet will always get you the right answers. So use the applets for these assignments. This is where the central limit theorem comes into play. Because now we're talking about for 60 women. And when we have 60 women right here, we need to take the standard deviation of 17 and divide it by the square root of 60. Now, the best way I think to do this is to go square root of 60. And then I'm going I'm to copy this. I'm going to restart my calculator and take 17 divided by the square root of 60. I've saved that, so I know what the square root of 60 is. There's no mistakes. I'm not square rooting the wrong thing. This is my new standard error of a mean for a sample size of 60. This is for a sample size of 60. I can put this over here into both applets. And now I will be solving for the proper distribution. So going back over here what would the mean be? Well, the mean is going to stay the same for this distribution. Exactly the same. Because if we know that most pregnancies last 264 days, well, wouldn't the average of 60 pregnancies be most likely to be 264 days? Now, the standard deviation is what we just found there. And I'm going to delete everything down to right there. 
we did n excuse me we did the standard deviation divided by the square root of n so the standard deviation was 17 and then it was over the square root of 60 that gets you the new standard deviation for a sampling distribution of y bar the mean of y what is probably that the mean duration of these pregnancies will be less than 259 days so we want to see below 259 days we can kind of look right there that's about two standard deviations down so it's gonna be about two percent ish so 0 0.011 so 1.139 does it it doesn't want it as a percentage watch out for these problems was it 0 0.011 now, why would it change the way it wants the answer all of a sudden? Make sure not to get tripped up. First time it asks for percentages, second time it asks for a decimal. Don't get tripped up. A lot of people lose points on these problems because Course Compass likes to be weird. Going on to the next one right here. So we're looking at cars and CO2 emissions. With these cars, we know that the they normally put out, or it's a normal model, with a mean of 3.7 and a standard deviation of 0.7. This company has 60 cars. So we need to get the new standard deviation for the sampling distribution of y bar. That will be, let's take the square root of 60 first. We had this before. I think it was still in my copy. So now I take the standard deviation divided by the square root of n. Standard deviation divided by the square root of n gets me my new standard deviation for the sampling distribution of y bar. That's what we had in the previous problem. This is our new standard deviation for the sampling distribution of y bar. So with this in mind right here, we need to use the David M. Lane applet again. We'll put in our mean, we'll put in our standard deviation, and we have our nice pretty graph above and there's our answer. If you notice, we could have guesstimated around 2.2% or so because we know above here, um, excuse me, I'm way off today. I meant to say around, uh, can't even think, around 16% uh, because 16% would be above one standard deviation. I thought we were at two standard deviations. Um, but 16% is what we basically have above one standard deviation and we see our answers kind of close to that because of the 68 rule. 68 in the center, 16 on the outside, 60 on the outside, 100%. So we do get around 16%, it's 13.38%. <laughs> so we need to put in two three decimal places. There we go. So now it wants there is only a 10% chance that the fleet's cars is greater than what? So this is a greater than right here, so let's go over here. We want to find the top 10%. Now the top 10% is going to be somewhere contained in here. And there seems to be one mistake. Sorry about that. And let's put the area to zero right now. So here we go, this is the proper graph. So the top 10% is going to be contained in here somewhere. And actually I think it only wants you to round it to one decimal place. So the top 10% would be about, mm, let's say it's about 3.84 I say. Let's see how close we were. 3.81, ah, 3.81. Round to one decimal place, 3.8. So we would have gotten it right guessing, but hey, much better to get the answer and get it correct and see the sampling distribution. This is the sampling distribution for a sample of 60 cars because we've divided the standard deviation by the square root of n, which was 60. First the last problem, this is the big tricky one that really gets people. We are going to use the same techniques, the exact same techniques. So if you ate tables, you've noticed you probably get stiffed or you might get really great tips, but on average, things average out. So if you were to wait on 50 parties over the weekend, what would your average tips be like? So let's take $10.20 and put it in here at the center. And now we need to take a new standard deviation for the sampling distribution of Y bar. With this in mind, we are going to take 
the square root of 50. This is our square root of n. Standard deviation over the square root of n. We have 5.10 divided by, and this once again, standard deviation divided by the square root of n. 0.721. Let's go ahead and copy this and bring it back over here to the applet. Every time I'm doing this, I'm redrawing the distribution. 10.2. Keep putting that in the top one by accident. Let's fix that. So now we have the distribution. As you notice, this would be your average tip from 50 tables. Your average tip from 50 tables. That's what the model looks like. Now the question asks, what is the probability of making over $600? To make over $600 means you would have to make $12 per table. How do I know that? 600 divided by 50 tables means an average tip of $12 per table. That's how you can find out the average tip needed to make the amount in question. Sometimes it's not as easy of math, but this one was. So let's go to the applet and ask it that. We need to take our answer over here and bring it back to the original page. Because on this one right here, we can ask the applet, what is the probability of making above, and it was $12 a table. Now if you notice, I didn't put in 600 because we're looking here at the probability of above $12 a table, which means on average our tip was above $12, which means we made more than $600 when we averaged together all our tips. This is the probability over here, and it's pretty tiny, 0 0.0063. The total amount that she earns on the best 1% of such weekends. This is why we need it in both applets. So the best 1% of weekends is going to be way over here. And this is where people make a tiny mistake. If we go to the best 1% of weekends, she will make, on average from tables, $11.87. Now that's not what she makes all weekend. What she would make all weekend would be $11.87.8 times 50 tables. And all weekend she would make nearly $600, very close to. You notice the probability of making $600 was about 1%, and this is the top 1% right here. So let's go ahead and bring this back over and put it in. It wants it to two decimal places, and it likes the answer. Now remember, this is covering the central limit theorem and how the distribution will get tighter and more normal as we do a greater and greater sample distribution of the mean of y bar. We're not looking at individual observations here. We're looking at if you take 50 observations and average them all together, what would that average be like? Very good to practice this and get it down. Good luck.